We are in AP Calculus Lesson 2-4, Advanced Power Chain Rule. All of them, what's our objective? Um, apply the chain rule to the powerhouse for complex problems. Yes, when I say complex problems, I'm kind of doing a hand-wavy, wishy-washy way of saying, these are harder problems. Last Friday was simpler problems. Um, today there's going to be lots of stuff. So. To explain what I think the difference between um, simple versus complex, I would say that all of these things are simple. And I would say that all of those things are complex because they have more things inside of them. This one has an X inside. This one has an X plus three inside. Therefore, this thing is harder. That's my way of explaining that. You can all nod our heads. That makes sense more or less. All right, cool. So I want you to tell me, doubter in dinner, Giorgio, this is gonna be the d outer or the doubter. This is the d inner, or the inner, the dinner, sorry. What's doubter, Giorgio? Um, no, 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 no. Square root two? No. Let me ask an easier question. What house are we in? Are you general triggy, triggy log? Power? Ah, okay. thank you. Yes, this is a powerhouse, yeah. right? So if this is powerhouse, Powerhouse rules say that the two goes where, Giorgio? Out front, so it's... Comes out front, so Two X to the power of one. This could be two X to the power of one, or just simply two X, good. And then the derivative of that X is... What's the derivative of X, anyone? Uh, one and this is kind of silly to say, but it's this new thing that I'm starting. If I say, um, normally I would just say, okay, the derivative of x to the power of two is two x, and I don't think about multiplying by one. Technically, you always end at one with every derivative. You say, okay, two x, and then I'm looking at u x, what is the derivative of x, and then it's one. Normally, all of these things should be one. Let's go ahead and assess that. Alden, can you do the derivative of three x to the power of four with respect to x, the second problem? Um, it's in the powerhouse, so four, 4 times 3 is 12, and then x to the second. Be careful. Or no, x to the third. Good, yeah, so we went down a power from 4 down to 3. Excellent. That was our doubter. And then I'm looking at ux, the derivative of x, Alden, is? Uh, 4. The derivative of just x. Of just x. 1, thank you. Yeah. These are all going to end in 1. All right. Diego, what house are we in for this one? Uh, power. Okay, let's go ahead and do down. It's going to be positive 10x to the power of negative 3. Ooh, I thought I would trick him, but he got it right, yeah. We went down from negative 2 down to negative 3. We get this negative 3, and then the negative 2 times negative 5 gave us a positive 10. A lot of tricky bits there, and you didn't make any mistakes. Good job. And then I'm looking at you, x. I need to find my dinner. Don't forget your dinner. What is the derivative of x, Diego? All right. Can we just leave it as an integer? Oh, you should be comfortable um, converting between the two. Usually, if you were, this would be a multiple choice type of question, and this one would not show up. I mean, I would say maybe 20% of the time, but they'll probably put it as a fraction. How do you put that as a fraction, Diego? Is it 10, 10 over x cubed? Yeah, it should be 10 over x to the power of 3. You should be familiar with both terms. This form and this form might show up on a multiple choice test. Nice one. And we're all the way back to Giorgio. What house are we in? Powerhouse. Powerhouse, because we're not general triggy log. And then I don't have any crack, or I don't have any rationals or weird things happening. It's just a rational in the power. What do I do? So you multiply the six times half. So you get three X. I'm still trying to figure out the power. Yeah, careful here. Because we have a power of one half and we need to go down one which is down one over one, which is really down two over two. Is it just one three-fourth? No, mm -hmm. it's one fourth? No. So I, I got your like fractions for you right here. Two and two are like fractions. Two over two is one. One minus two is? Negative one. Negative one, exactly. The power here is? Negative one over two. Negative one half. Right. Excellent. And then, Giorgio, what's the derivative of x? One. One, okay, and again, let's go ahead and practice the different forms. This can have another form. Give me another form, Giorgio. Uh, 
Oh, oh, oh. You can either get rid of that negative power or get rid of that half power and turn it into a radical, whichever one you want to do first. I personally think getting rid of the negative is good. How do we get rid of the yeah, negative? Yeah, you do three over x to the power of a half, but couldn't that half turn into just the square root? So it's square root of x. Indeed, three over square root of x. And technically, I could go even a step further and be like, well, Mr. Sundell, you can't have radicals in the denominator. You need to get rid of that by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by square root of x. That almost never happens. I've never seen that on an AP test. But in theory, technically, we have no square roots in the denominator allowed. So you'd have to multiply by square root of x, square root of x, to turn this into 3 root x over x, if I'm being overly simplifying. Uh, whenever I say simplify, you shouldn't have a square root of x or any square roots, for that matter, in the denominator. But I, I've never seen people do that additional step. It's gonna be that thing or that thing. These are the two possibilities that you'll see on an AP test. So far, so good. We're all nodding our heads, and we move on. Okay, that was review, that's Friday. Friday is, okay, we just go ahead and do simple derivatives. Now we're gonna do complex derivatives, where the dinner, our derivative of the inner, is no longer gonna be one. I gave you some more space, I hope that's in that room. Um, again, let's go ahead and label these things. This is the doubter, the derivative of the outer, and this is gonna be the dinner, the derivative of the inner. It's always doubter times dinner, doubter times dinner. That was on our speech sheet today, right? Was it on the speech sheet? Yeah. Or was it? It was like there. Yeah, chain rule. Doubter times dinner. So we're always doing doubter times dinner. Don't forget your dinner. All right, let's try this one. And notice the similarities here. This one was something to the power of two. This one was something to the power of two. This was something to the power of four. This was something to the power of four. Oh, look, there's a three out front. Oh, look, there's a three out front. These are very, very similar. Very, very similar. There's just more stuff happening on the insides. Instead of just being X, it's all this complex stuff. All right, Alden, you're up. What's my house for my first problem up here? Power. Powerhouse, okay, so it's our doubter. Um, square root of two. Careful, so the two's gonna come down in front of the house. Okay. So it's gonna be two times the house, and then we're just gonna leave the inside. You're not allowed to touch the inside. It's only x plus three. Leave the x plus three, but we are going to change this power. This power of two goes down to a power of Goes down to power of one, which means I don't really write. I'm just gonna leave it blank. It might be confusing. Maybe you want to write a one in your notes. That was doubter. That's probably the hardest piece for today. You need to only take the derivative of the outer. Everything on the inner, we're gonna leave until the next step, which means this x plus three is untouched. And now, Alden, take the derivative of x plus three. Um, doesn't the two come down? So to two. The so two was part of the outer, we're done with the outer. Now I'm only focusing on the x plus three. Only looking at x plus three, what's the derivative of x plus three? Two x, I don't know. No, there's no more two. I don't remember. What's the derivative of a constant? Doesn't it not have one? Yeah, well I mean it's zero, right? The derivative of any number is zero. It's asking you what's the slope of that line? What's the slope of that line? That line can be moved up, down, it doesn't matter, but the slope of that line will always be zero. Okay, so we know that the derivative of three was zero. What's the derivative of x, Alden? Um, one. One. So the derivative of x plus three is? One. One, so I really should have just said one. And I know I lied a little bit. Mr. Sindel, you said that when it's uh, simple, it means that doing there's always one. I, I meant that the inner is a little bit more complex. So the dinner happened to be one in this one case because this was a simple inner. So I would multiply the two, and do I have enough room off to the side? And I can say that my final answer here is 2x plus 6. Done and done. I go ahead and I can distribute the 2 into the x and the 3. All right, moving on. Diego, what house are we in? Power. Powerhouse, okay. Let's look at the outer. I'm gonna ignore the inner for just a little bit. There you go, I scribbled it out for you. Go ahead and do a rule for powerhouse. That's multiplying the exponent by the number of times. Yep, so I'm gonna get 12. 12, and then do not touch the inner. 12 times the quantity of? 4x to the power of three. 4x to the power of three, and the quantity, and its power is? Not four. Three. 
Yeah, this went from four all the way to three. All right, that's doubter. Now dinner, be careful here on dinner. So, for dinner, do we have to uh, multiply the exponent here? So we're gonna ask the house. What house are we in for the inner? Power. Powerhouse, powerhouse, that means the three comes down in front and you're gonna get what? 12. 12. X to the power of three. Double. all right. All right. And I could multiply those together. I don't really feel like doing that. Those are kind of big numbers. 12 times 12 is 144, 144 times 4 is 576. I, if I wanted to, I could move one of those all together and say, that's 576, x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is 9, 10, 11, and say this is x to the power of 11. But let's go ahead and avoid that. Well, technically, you would multiply doubter times dinner every single scenario. This is, I, I've never really seen those numbers be so big on the AP test, but they, they could be. All right, moving on. We've got Giorgio first. What's my doubter, the derivative of the outer? 10 parentheses x squared negative x. x squared minus x, and parentheses to the power of? One. Careful. Wait, it's negative three. Oh yeah, negative three. Negative three, good. It was a negative two and it went down even further to a negative three. So there's where our negative three came from. Excellent, you got the doubter. Now do the dinner. One. Careful, careful, careful. No. The dinner is all of this x squared minus x. There's two derivatives. You have this derivative, and then you'll have this derivative. There's two different derivatives that you'll need to do. First, what's the derivative of x squared? 2x. There it is, 2x. We'll let Giorgio handle this one though. So again, x squared turned into a 2x, and now I need a negative x, or a minus x, turns into what, Giorgio? A zero? No. The derivative one. of x that turns out we got was one. one. So the derivative of negative x is one. Negative one. Good. And technically you can multiply those all together. I'm not really feeling in the mood, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip down to our last function. Alden, you're up. Um three. Good. How'd you get three? Uh one half times six. One half times six is three. Perfect. And then parentheses and then x minus Good. And then negative two. Careful. I mean, not negative two, negative one half. Negative one half, yeah. Again, these powers are the same as last time. So last time we had Giorgio do negative a half, so this one is also negative a half down here. You guys can see the connection. Alden correctly did doubter. Let's do dinner, Alden. Okay. Uh, well, negative one half there's two derivatives. Good. So the first one is one. Perfect. Minus three. Done. There it is. She got the doubter. Done. Then multiply by the dinner. Done. And then technically you would have to simplify all of these. I am just showing you how to do doubter times dinner. That's the point of my lesson today. All right. Let's see some examples that you would actually see on an AP test. So here's example one. If I tell you that g of x, this function is a fraction. First of all, be scared. It's a fraction. It's a quotient. If it's a quotient, unquotient it. How do I unquotient this? I mean, kind of. You could say it's four times something. Four times. X is second minus two, and then it's gonna be negative two. Negative two, again, this two came up to the top and became a negative. Everything that it was attached to came up top, and then the two turned into a negative. All right, if you ever see a quotient, your first step is always to unquotient it aside from the last lesson of the unit, in which case I'm giving you no choice, I'm making you do quotient rule, and everyone hates quotient rule. Avoid quotient rule at all costs. We avoided quotient rule, cool. Now we're ready to take the truth. So, let's give this to Diego. I want a doubter. It's always gonna be, what times what? Uh, the doubter times dinner. dinner. Always doubter times dinner. Most people forget to eat dinner, and that's why we're all skinny, we're not. Getting those mad gains, bro. <laughs> All right, doubter. And uh, that's gonna be uh, negative eight. Perfect, negative eight. Parentheses, x squared minus two. Minus two, we did not touch the inner. Do not touch the inner until we get to dinner. Okay, what power are we, Diego? Negative three. Very good, negative three. It went down from negative two down to negative three. Okay, don't forget to eat your dinner. We need those gains. What's my dinner? 
Go for it now. Uh, it's going to be 2x minus, no, just 2x. Yeah, because it was 2x to the power of 1, which means it's just 2x. And then let's go ahead and see what form the AP test would probably do. They'll say, okay, they should expect students to know that this thing will have a negative power, therefore it flips. Georgia, can you keep simplifying this thing for me? Would it be 2 on top to two on top. x to the power of 3? Over, like, over x to the power of 3. Over x to the power of 3? Like that? Maybe. Not quite. So everything that has, that's underneath that negative, all of this stuff should now be on the bottom. So all of this oh, all x of squared minus 2 should be on the bottom, and that's now to the power of what, Giorgio? 3. Positive 3. Good, yeah. Positive 3. What was left on the top? two things left on the top. There is that thing and that thing. Multiply them together. Okay. Um, negative 16x. Done. That's probably the form that you'll see on the AP test. You'll see something that looks like that. Or maybe they'll leave it as a negative power, but more often than not, they'll keep it uh, positive power and make sure that you know you're flipping words. So far, so good. So that's just a combination of the doubter and dinner right there. Yep. Doubter times dinner. That's what that is. You always take doubter first, then multiply it by dinner, and then you get your answer. Doubter times dinner. All right, last example, here we go, example two. All right, Elton, I've got h of x is equal to that. Ugh, gross, it's not a fraction, but it's gross for another reason. It's a radical. What do we do? Should that we undo it? Unradical it, yes. Okay, and so it'll be um, negative in parentheses So if there's a four here, you would be right. It's not the power of one four. Um, it's the power of one. One half. One half. Good. Yeah. By default, the the index is always a two. Therefore, this two matches with that two there. Perfect. So Alden unquotiented it for us. You want to try doing dinner and dinner as well? Sure. Just right. give me a second to write it down. I'm gonna go ahead and write out our rule. We're taking the derivative. Every derivative is always doubter, dip outer times the inner. The derivative of the outer times the derivative of the inner every single time. All right, I'll give you your best shot. Doubter. Okay. Well, how is it just, it's powerhouse, okay, right? We're not general trig log, yeah, so we're in powerhouse. So is it like negative one half? Yes, negative one half, perfect. Okay. Negative one half, and then that stuff, the stuff in parentheses. It's all going to be to some power. I don't know what power to go to, though. It's going to be to the negative, negative one half. Right? Very good, yeah. And this is going to be something you'll see over and over and over again. You're going to have a one half, and it always goes down to a negative one half. You don't even have to do all the math over again and be like, uh, one half minus one is one half minus two over two, which is negative one. No, you should just be able to skip straight down to it's always negative one half. Perfect. You got down here. Don't forget. And then times, um, so it's going to be 12x to the third. You're very close. There is a tiny little mistake. Oh, negative. Very good. Why is it negative? Because it's got a negative sign. <laughs> yeah. There was a negative 3 times a positive 4 is negative 12. And this went to a 3 because it's 4 and went down a power. Okay, cool. Now we need to simplify this thing and we're done. Where did the 2 go? Oh, it's a constant. Yeah. Great question. No, that's a question that, again, just for your class, you guys knew this. But maybe in future years they don't know that. Where did that 2 go, Giorgio? Why do we not have anything? It's constant. It automatically just means it's 0. The derivative of a constant is 0, so it was as if it didn't exist. Perfect. All right, we've got to multiply these things together. Do you guys know how to do a negative 1 half really quickly? Or do we want to go step by step? Um, isn't it just one? Isn't it just one? I get, no, we, never we mind, sorry. I'm making things up. Unfortunately, you cannot cancel out any halves. It's I on do, the bottom, right? 
it's going to be on the bottom. So here we go. I have a negative one half. I set up my negative one half because hey, look, there it is. That negative one half is right here. Negative one half. I just extended the. Um, there's a name for that bar, but I'm just going to say the bar. All right, and then Alden said that thing came down to the bottom, so I'm going to have in parentheses two minus three x to the power of four in parentheses. That's now on the bottom. What's going to happen to that negative one half, Alden? It's going to be positive. It's going to be positive one half because we flipped it. It's the reciprocal. All right, things were left in the top, though, weren't they? Mm -hmm. What was left in the top? Uh, negative twelve x to the third. Okay, so far so good. We need to supply one more step, Alden, and we're out here. Power of one half is really not really a power of one half. It's also a square root. Exactly. It's what you did up here. Square root and one half. So it's going to be two square root of uh, two minus three x to the fourth. To the fourth. Done. To the fourth. That's probably what you'll be seeing on the AP test for the multiple choice answer. Where did the one come from up there? The negative one. Good question. Someone else answered. The question is, where did that one come from, Diego? Uh, it's part of the one half. We just Oh, okay. Yeah. Keep asking those questions. So, um, when we, if you have a power to one half, so the only thing that's going to go inside the square root is the, let's say, parentheses, exactly. not what's outside the parentheses. Exactly, yeah. That two was outside, so it did not get put under the square root, but these parentheses were underneath the one half, therefore they're underneath the square root. Why do you only do it once derivative? Why wouldn't it just keep going like three times twelve and then two to the power yeah, so two and then that is a great question. When do you know when to stop doing chain rule? Can't you do it over and over again? Technically the new inner is just x. Because we did the derivative of the inner. If the derivative of the inner was that and that, all of this the house was three and four, that was a powerhouse. The new inner is just the x. So the new inner is x, the dinner, or I guess the dinner inner would be one here. One would be the d inner inner. And why can you just leave it as negative three x to the power of four? And why can we leave this right here? Yeah, wait. What, which negative three x to the power of four are you talking about? That one up there. This one right here? Yeah, why do you have to convert it to negative four? This one is still on the inside. We have not touched you. Anything that we do not touch, we have to leave for later. Oh, it's kind of okay. like the leftover. The doubter was just this piece and this piece. We have not touched any of that piece. So we're going to touch this piece now. Okay? Now we haven't touched this piece. We've touched that piece and that piece. So we're going to do that now. You always leave your inner as a leftover. The leftover, done. Leftover, done. Good questions, good questions. Other questions? All right, our objective today was, can you apply the chain rule to the powerhouse for complex problems? How you feel on this one? This is a five. A four? A five? Um, a five, all right. Not, 